Let's launch Fast Draw Viewer. The first thing you see upon launch is a set of tips that will help you get started with using the program. You can also always open these tips again through the Help menu. FastDraw Viewer opens files from any media, starting from memory cards all the way to network servers. So you don't have to copy anything to your hard drive. Let's insert a memory card into the computer. When you connect the computer to an external media, FastDraw Viewer automatically detects it and asks if you want to open it. If you do, it does so extremely quickly. In the center, you see the instant raw image render, not some JPEG preview that is usually presented at this stage by most viewers. You can zoom out and in on it, scroll, pan, and rotate. In regards to zooming, panning, and rotating, you can go to the keyboard shortcut menu and assign shortcuts you are more familiar with to these actions. The color management system allows one to choose a working profile based on the gamut of their monitor, or they can use the default sRGB workflow. At the bottom, you have the film strip, which can be placed anywhere you want in the program window, or even moved onto a different monitor. It can also be turned into a light table at will. And it can be docked in its most recent place. Here we have the raw histogram, which can also be moved wherever you wish, and will be one of the primary tools for culling that we use. Directly below it are the per-channel over and under exposure statistics. These include the, the number and percentages of pixels in each channel that were either over or underexposed, as well as the number and percentage of overexposed pixels after exposure correction application. I would like to stress that every tool in FastDraw Viewer is based exclusively on the raw data of your shot. As a matter of fact, it is very important that you can judge exposure based on the raw data and not on some embedded JPEG. Here we have XMP metadata, which includes ratings, labels, as well as editable titles and descriptions. All of these are saved in XMP sidecar files, which allow the raw converter you choose to use to pick up work where you left off. If said raw converter supports XMP. There is also a fully customizable EXIF panel, which you can tailor to show whatever you wish to view. As you can see, there are a lot of EXIF tags which you can choose to display. You can also hide whichever panels you don't want to see, or all of them if you so desire. To open and close all panels, just toggle the tab key. Now let's talk about the bottom bar. Here you have access to drives, folders, and files. Next to it, the number of the file in the folder, the file name, raw or JPEG display mode, very basic EXIF data, per channel view, including red, green, blue, and black and white, focus peaking, including edges and details, to check in focus areas, highly detailed areas, and localize the areas with high levels of noise. False details. Shadow boost. Opening shadows to check for the details and the level of noise. Exposure correction. Using which you can adjust the overall brightness of the image in either direction. Overexposure and underexposure indication. White balance presets, for which you have very many options. 
Notice that however we change the white balance, the histogram stays the same because it is the real raw histogram. Fully customizable white balance, which you can apply with Alt-click on an area that you consider to be neutral gray. And white balance based on color, temperature, and tint, which you can calculate if you wish. Fully compatible with Adobe Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw. Your white balance display mode can be set to be displayed in mired tint or white balance coefficient. Contrast curves, for which you also have very many options. And finally, the aforementioned preview rotation, as well as several service icons. One more important and useful feature that I would like to mention is the propagation of white balance and exposure correction. After white balance and exposure correction are set for one shot, FastDraw Viewer will open the next files with the same settings. This can be set in the preferences and significantly saves time working with the series and panoramas. White balance, exposure correction, ratings, labels, titles, and descriptions will be saved in XMP sidecar files. FastDraw Viewer has fully customizable keyboard shortcuts, which you can access through the file menu or a keyboard shortcut you designate for it. Every single keyboard shortcut can be changed to whatever you find preferable. You can also add or remove keyboard shortcuts for existing actions. Plus to add, X to remove. FastDraw Viewer also has a very extensive set of preferences, which you can tailor to fit your culling needs. These preferences can be accessed through the FastDraw Viewer menu or a keyboard shortcut you assign to them. Now let's talk about file navigation. You can access files through the file tree on the left, the film strip on the bottom, and the bottom bar, where you can enter the number of the file in the folder progression. Or use the afore shown folder icon. You can use either keyboard shortcuts or the menu to navigate files, depending on your particular tastes though shortcuts are definitely faster. While you are selecting files, you can move or copy them to other folders. On the other end of the spectrum, those what we don't like can be sent to a rejected subfolder. Files moved to the rejected subfolder are not deleted, so you can browse these subfolders at any time, and return files that you have decided to keep. Finally, after making sure that the subfolder only has those files that you don't want, you can clear it. Since we are working with a card, we're not going to use the rejected subfolder at this time, because cards can glitch when it comes to recording new folders, but if you do choose to use the rejected subfolder, it will give you a warning prior to sending something there. This can also be turned off if you so wish. All of the commands in the file menu have keyboard shortcuts attached to them, which you can customize at will. Now, the copy function can be very useful when you are working with a card, because it allows you to put keepers in a more permanent place. Now, FastDraw Viewer is designed to do the culling that is done before the conversion stage. You can open up a shot within an external program, directly from FastDraw Viewer. Upon launch, FastDraw Viewer detects some of the raw converters that are already installed on your hard drive, like Adobe Lightroom, Adobe Camera Raw, etc. But you can change the automatic assignment at any time. So don't forget to set your favorite raw converters and assign them keyboard shortcuts in FastDraw Viewer that will open them when you wish to proceed to the conversion stage. Also, FastDraw Viewer can be opened from your favorite viewer 
the same way you would open a raw converter. This concludes our introductory video. We would love to hear your feedback and questions. They mean a lot to us. If you have any topics that you would like us to cover, or questions to answer, please contact us. Additionally, if you have any raw files that are currently not supported, we would be extremely grateful if you would share them with us. We never share any images with third parties unless we are explicitly asked to do so by the file owner.